I get around mostly by foot in my network of tunnels. But I have been known to ride in a duck. He is without a doubt one of the most evil characters that I've ever encountered in my life. 50 years ago, Bob Kane introduced perhaps the most unusual Batman villain of all, a dapper little fellow named Oswald Cobblepot, also known as the Penguin. When I created the Penguin in the comic strip, I thought he was comical looking. When I was a kid, I read the comic books. He looked so unvillainous. You have kind of an image of this Penguin character already. The Penguin it looks like a cute little fella. But just get that right out of your mind, because this is ho so totally unique and different, especially coming from this man. In the comics, I, th I thought that that was one of the characters that had the least amount of, uh, of a foundation psychologically. It was more just a, a funny-looking man as far as I could tell, but uh, we're making him the Penguin. Unlike the comic book, Burton and DeVito have created a tragic, strangely deformed creature with a brilliant mind. He was abandoned by his parents, raised by penguins, and now lives in the sewer. Flanked by an army of loyal penguins, he embarks on a diabolical plan to destroy Gotham City, and... I've never played anything like this before. I am an animal! This is from the bowels of I don't know where. Go! I've never explored this in my life. I don't think there's anybody any better making the horrible acceptable. I just feel like a real kindred spirit with Danny. I mean, somebody who just has a certain uh, take on things which I feel very close to. Director Tim Burton is also an artist, and his drawing of the Penguin became the blueprint for the look of the character. And to achieve the original look, DeVito endured a three-hour makeup routine. It's this cold, clammy glue. It would just go, you know, right? Just like that, and then all in here, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the only moment that's like walking into the water, you know, really cold. You know? <laughs> you take big leaps in your character, you know? So when I'd look at him, I was kind of envious sometimes because I knew you could kind of really kind of get locked away and just, just go for it. It's really creepy. I was frightened. He handed me one of his slimy little flippers, you know. <laughs> and he looked at me. <laughs> that was it. I said, bye. Oh, also, yeah, he stays in character all the time. I loved it. You know, I just loved it. Then it'll be another hour, you know. It's that penguin thing, you know. <laughs> For the Penguins Commando Army, Burton needed a battalion of live trained penguins. What we've trained the birds to do is to come to a, a call, a whistle. We've trained them to wear their little missiles in their little hats. When they get to where they're going, they each get a fish. Come on, guys. Hurry up. Come on. This is Lucy. She's been trained to wear these harnesses. She's been acclimated to this for about four weeks. She's worn wardrobe in the past. They don't mind it. It's uh, part of the deal for them. Penguins! My babies! It was great working with the penguins. I had tons of penguins. Tons. Who, who can hate a penguin? The time has come to punish all of them! I rule the birds. Well, maybe not all the birds. To supplement the live penguins, Burton asked the makeup effects master, Stan Winston, who won Oscars for Aliens and Terminator 2, to create penguin robots. We are duplicating life so that we can get some performance out of a creature that otherwise would not be able to perform. If we do our job correctly, you should not be aware that these are not real penguins. Are you talking to me? Are you looking at me? The special effects technology that was utilized to create the illusion of real life also created the Penguin's trademark weapon of choice. They're very helpful. I can fly with my umbrellas. I can roast you like a marshmallow. 